Tonight, we have another guest reviewer sitting in for me and reviewing a play that is most, one of the most talked about shows of the season, The Music Man. We'd like to welcome Charles Wright, who is co-president of the Drama Desk, a very dear friend for many, many years, and who writes all of the musical notes for the musical, let me, help me out here, Charles, the musicals in the the See, musicals and Mufti series at the York Theater Company. Yum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. I could not resist that. The Music Man, this is one of my all time favorite musicals. Uh, certainly uh, best known for the original production and the movie with Robert Preston, but it's had several revivals on Broadway. And now it is back with Hugh Jackman, the man who made a better Peter Allen than Peter Allen did. <laughs> And of course, this is very quickly the story of a con artist who comes to this small town in Iowa. He convinces the town they need a boys band and he sells them instruments and uniforms and he promises to teach them how to play, but he doesn't know one note from the other. And the woman who does know one note from the other is the local librarian and he romances her to throw her off guard, but ends up falling in love. It's just such a feel good musical, such a wonderful score. And you've got Hugh Jackman. What more could one want? He's a, he's a fly-by-night character who finds that he can't fly away when the time comes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I have to say, this is the show that I was really looking forward to. And Hugh Jackman uh, came in with a lot of expectations and he gave a good performance. I think if this had been someone who was not a big movie star and they were, go, were playing for people who had not seen Robert Preston or Craig Bianco. Let, let's say they had just seen Matthew Broadwick in the, in the role. I think he'd have gotten very good notices. But with this, you, you expect it to be perfect. You expect it to be amazing. And it's a good, solid performance. But is it, is it amazing? Is it off the charts? I'm not, I'm not sure that the two leads are ideally cast. It's wonderful to see them. They're in, incredibly endearing. But... Um... You know, the Music Man works best when the audience feels that this is the very last chance for love for Harold Hill, Professor Harold Hill and uh, Mary and the Librarian. And I didn't get that feeling at all. Um, but it's so wonderful to see them and to hear them sing, even though Sutton Foster is um, uh, as, as a mezzo-soprano or Contralto isn't ideally suited to the music. Barbara well, Cook, no, we're, course, we're used to someone like a Shirley Jones or a Rebecca Luker uh, singing uh, lyric and, sopranos. And this, yeah, right. And, and and the score has been reorchestrated for her, but she does put her own stamp on it. She you does. Know, when she sings "Good Night, My Someone," mostly that song is done just so wistfully, and she sings it that way. But there's also a very noticeable touch of frustration. And she comes on stage. She literally has us at no. That's her first line. You know, Harold Hill is trying to get her attention. And she just says no. And it's great. Or in the second act, when she tries uh, to seduce another traveling salesman who's there to expose Hill. I mean, the way she goes about it, it's just such, such a comic delight. She's a wonderful comedian. Oh, it's a, it's a terrific performance. Yes, absolutely. But, you know, the, um, the real jewels of this production are the supporting players. Um, Jane Howdy Shell as uh, Eulalie McKechnie Shin and Jefferson Mays as the mayor. Uh, uh, Marie Mullen, a uh, great Irish actress as um, uh, Marion's mother. Um, mm -hmm. Eddie Corbich as J.C. Squires, and and a uh, a really really endearing and um, charismatic young man named Benjamin Pajak as Marion's little brother. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, Winthrop is Marion's brother. This is the Music Man, 
not Schmegadoon. The dancing, uh, oh, wow. Carlisle is the choreographer. The dancing is stupendous. With Absolutely. a lot of tap, which um, of course isn't exactly um, uh, what you expect for an all-white community in Iowa <laughs> in 1912. But what would a Sutton Foster show be without tap dancing? And well, remember, they're Irish. So Irish they are were also. Irish. Yes, there's the, there is the clog um, tradition, yes. Right. At the Kirk Hall, there is this wonderful dance-off between Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster. And it is one of the highlights of the show. It's, it reminds me of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Don't miss it. Jerry Zaks has directed it. And this, this, is, this is Jerry Zaks' specialty, old musicals that look, you know, it, it looks like they, they were, as they were done originally, but they feel so fresh. And he's accomplished that uh, here. He, well, it's all interesting also that Santa Lacosto's um, scenic design is very old fashioned, very, um, a lot of flats. Um, so it, it has an old Broadway feel to it. Things that I didn't like, I can understand at the beginning, you know, uh, the community led by the mayor's wife performs an Indian dance and they took that out. But what, why, where's the logic? Why did they have to change the lyrics to Shibubi? I don't think that, there was nothing. I, I, I went over it in my head many times and A, I couldn't find anything wrong with the original lyrics. And B, I'm not sure the new ones were any better, you know, as far as trying to be politically correct. Yes, I agree with you there, though I think it was an attempt to be politically correct. There's an exquisite uh, ballad in The Music Man, um, uh, My White Knight, uh, mm. which has been given up tempo treatment and a little bit of scatting for... Um, uh, Sutton Foster. Um, it's in, enormous fun to hear her do it that way. But I, I did miss that song. I, that was the one song where I really was missing the high notes. One cast member we had did not mention, Schuler Hemsley as Marcellus, an old friend of uh, Harold Hill, who just happens to be living in the town. This is one of my all-time favorite shows. I loved, I saw, I saw it for the first time in the movie with uh, Robert Preston. I saw the revival with Craig Bieco, who was amazingly good in the role. I, I have to say, I thought his performance was better than uh, Hugh Jackman and, and of course, Rebecca Luker. And it was a perfect production. This production is close to perfect, but between that slight difference with Hugh Jackman hitting the bar and the changing of the lyrics of Shibubi, I am going to give it four and a half out of five playbills. And this should be a five playbill show. I was actually, because of Shibuya, we was going to give it four playbills, but the dancing was just so amazing that I, I had to go uh, whole hog and with four and a half. I'll go with four and a half. I think that's very, uh, very accurate. Well, I, you know, I'm going to try to get to see this this month. I'm trying to do some catch up. If I can get into a couple of shows, this is one of the ones I'll try to see. But I have a couple of questions. Number one, did either of you see Showman, the movie, about no. P.T. Barnum? No, I did not, no. To me, I, I did, I did the, see the Broadway musical version of Barnum, which totally that's, different. That's but not I what I that. asked you. Because my point being that, that that's, the, that's what I will be expecting to see his Harold Hill be. It, that's, the, that's the level of what his... You know, what he did as P.T. Barnum is what you're saying is missing in this show. That's number one. Number two, I think that, that Marion Peru is supposed to be a maiden lady of maybe 27, 28, not 21, 22. I, I think you've got, you know, that age range is a little wrong. I, I, but, I, would, I, would, I would agree to you as far as 25 is concerned, but we'll, we'll simply have to agree to disagree on that, on that okay, point. Fine. And then the weekend that you went to see Music Man, I saw the movie again with Robert Preston and I thought, oh, I don't really want to watch. And then I got caught and I, I loved every single second of it. And, you know, Robert Preston was divine. I thank you so much, Charles Wright, for coming yes. in. I have to separate, I have to say Charles Wright as opposed to Charlie, so we know which Charles we're talking about. <laughs> Not in <laughs> the two again. Charlie's show, yes. Right. Well, wow. Charles, Charles Wright is the one wearing the blue shirt. 
<laughs> There's a title for you, The Two Charlie Show. I like that. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Bye, Charlie. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, and we'll folks. see... We'll see you all in the critic circle.